large city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Fancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Good morning, Chester. I ain't at all sure about that, Mr. Jones. Sure about what? But it's a good morning. Well, it's the only one we're going to get, Chester. Is that fresh coffee? No, sir, can't. That's the batch of boiled up last night. Oh? I ain't had time to make no fresh yet. Oh, why? Well, them fellas you locked up last night, Mr. Jones. Have they caused trouble? Well, they've been at me ever since I come in here fussing and complaining. About what? They want me to fix them some breakfast. Been carrying on about it like they'd never had before. Well, I guess they've never had anything like you're cooking before, Chester. Ain't you going to let them out this morning, Mr. Jones? Yeah, I guess so. They should be sober enough by now. Well, then it just don't make a bit of sense for me to go to all the trouble of feeding them, does it? No, forget it, Chester. I'm going to let them out. I do care. I got me enough to do around here just redding up the place. Stop feeding a clutch of prisoners that ain't even going to stay on. All right, Chester. That's enough. Oh, man. You two can come out now. Uh, don't seem like to turn the body out without no food, Marshal. You know, man, could go. Weak. Come on, get out of there and bring your friend with you. Uh, he ain't feeling oh. good, Marshal. Looks like his strength was sapped. Now, if we was to have some breakfast. Look, you weren't worried about food last night when you rode your horses under the long branch, and I'm not going to worry about it now. Go on, get out of here. Um, seems like we could have some coffee anyway. I said get out. Go oh, on, come on. See what I mean? You think we was running a boarding house around here? No. You should have just left them laying there in the scene last night to get pumped on. You better get the cell cleaned up, Chester. Uh-uh, and that's nothing, Mr. Dillon. It just don't seem right for them drunks to be able to make the fearful mess they do and have somebody to have to clean up after. Go on, Chester. Get it over with. Yes, sir. I'll do it all right, but I ain't going to like it. Well, me. I don't like hearing you complain about it either. Hello, Matt. Chester. Now, how about that? Slow down. Oh, something the matter with you two? Well, Chester doesn't like the way the marshal's office is being run, that's all. Well, neither do I. I was coming in to tell you about it. No? All right, Doc, what's on your mind? Some drunken drover jumped into my buggy last night out in front of the office and raced it down the street. Oh, did he bring it back? He couldn't. He turned it over going around the corner. You know who it was? No idea. Well, it was disappeared into the nearest saloon. I'm sorry, Doc, but it doesn't look like I can do anything for you. Well, why not? Well, in the first place, there was no harm done. My buggy was stolen. You got it back, didn't you? For heaven's sake, stop being such an old maid. Oh, maid. Now, look here, Matt. What do you want me to do? Sit around watching your buggy? No, 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 Matt. No, of course not. But there ought to be a better way of keeping the town in line. Well, maybe we could pass a law saying that drovers can't drive buggies, huh? I don't think that's terribly funny, Matt. All I'm saying is there must be something you can do. Look, Doc, I've had fevers and ague that you haven't cured. But at least when you come into my office, I try to help. And that's more than I can say for your office. Well, you better stick to your pills. I intend to. I certainly intend to. I won't be wasting any more time around here. You can be sure of that. Oh, 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 oh I'm sorry, Gilbert. I, I didn't mean to run you down. Marshal, oh, you're looking for the marshal? Yes. Go right on in for all the good it'll do you. Well, I'm getting out. Well, <laughs> doctor seem a little upset. Yeah, well, doc gets that way sometimes. <laughs> what can I do for you, Toby? Oh, uh, well, truth is, Marshal, I've come to register a complaint. 
Well, you're going to have to stand in line. How's that? Oh, never mind. What, what's your problem? Oh, well, Marshal, those chairs, you know, those chairs I have sitting along in front of the hotel along the boardwalk there? Yeah. Well, you know, people keep sitting in them. Well, I guess I don't understand. Well, what I mean is those chairs are put there for my hotel guests and the town loafers have taken over. Never any room for my guests. Have any of your guests complained to you? No. Well, how do you know that they'd want to use them? Well, I know. I just know, that's all. I see. Now, what do you want me to do about it? Well, Marshal, Dodge House has a, a, a reputation to uphold. And it isn't helping any with it. Every lazy, good for nothing in Dodge spends the day whittling or, or, or sleeping right at the front door. I want you to tell those men they can't do that anymore. You asking me to be a doorman, Mr. Doby? Well, no, of course not. <laughs> well, I have two suggestions for you, Mr. Doby. Either tell the loafers you speak of to move along or you take away the well, chairs. Now, I can't see that that's too much of a problem. Besides, I've never seen one guest at the Dodge House sit on that boardwalk in all the years well, that I've been now, here. Marsh, now, you go on, Doby, because you've got a hotel to run and you better tend to it. And I wouldn't I, be too hard on those loafers you speak of because most of them well, are men who... All, 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 all right, all right, Marshal, all right. I'm frank to say I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed in the Marshal's office. Good day. I'm beginning to get pretty disappointed in it myself. Yes, sir. I was afraid you was going to ask that. What does that mean? Yes, sir. You see, I was toting in a bucket of water to mop up with this morning. And just as I come in the door, one of them cussed prisoners hard something at me. And when I turned around and yelled back, I knocked her hat right off in the peg there. And the water flopped all over. Well, if you're that bad off, you better get Doc to give you some of that nerve tonic he saves for old women. Now, where did you put it? The bucket? Where did you put my hat, Chester? Yes, sir. Well, I was trying to dry it out over the stove. Oh, come on, Chester. Come on. I just got it a little bit too close. Burned the top clean out of it, Mr. Jones, so I just kind of throwed it out. You threw it out? Wasn't nothing left but the brand, Mr. Jones, and you know you, you'd look kindly foolish just going around in that. The brim. All right, Chester. Uh, where, where are you going? I am going to the store, Chester, to get myself a new hat so that I won't look so foolish, if that's possible. <laughs> later today, but now I won't have to, will I, meeting you in the store this way? <laughs> no, ma'am, I guess not. You know, Marshal, several of the town ladies have been meeting at our home from time to time uh, to discuss matters affecting our community. Uh-huh. And frankly, Marshal, uh, uh, we've been disturbed about the way things have been going on in Dodge. Oh? Is that so? Yes, Marshal. I, I was talking to the ladies about it last night. Bottles all over the street and noise and shootings every time the Texas herds come in. Uh-huh. And we ladies feel that perhaps the law might keep things just a little better under control. Well, I tell you something, Miss Bagley. Maybe oh, oh, you... excuse me. There's Mr. Bagley. He's come to take me home in the buggy. I guess I'll have to come to your office after all, Marshal. Uh, yeah. Why don't you do that? All right, Marshal. I can take care of you now. I want a hat, Jonas. Hat? <laughs> I just sold you one month or two ago. I want another one. Well, sure. See what I got out back. The same kind will do. Mm-hmm. Well, you have a look at that new shop's rifle. Just came in today. Gilmore, you old 
Chief, how are you? Oh, how man. are you, Ellen? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get into town? I just rolled in. I got the dry throat and cancer. Well, we better fix that up. Jonas! Yes, I've almost found him. Uh, no hurry. I'll be back later. Come on, Luke. I'll buy the first one. I won't give you an argument. <laughs> Well, how long are you here for? Oh, just a day this time. I got my eye on the far west. This part of the country isn't going to make anybody rich. I just figure it's time to move on. You know, that might not be a bad idea for you, too, come to think of it. Yeah, you may be right, Luke. You may be right. like a fortune's just lying there waiting for us. Well, it is, Matt. I tell you, it is. What? Now that the railroad is joined up, there's just no telling what a man could do for himself out there. I know, but a lot of gold rushers came back with holes in their britches. Sure they did, Matt, but this is different. Things are starting up now that'll last. Well, you know, you could set yourself up your own town. You're aiming pretty high, aren't you, Luke? <laughs> Sure, I'm aiming high, Matt, and you should, too. What do you figure you'll ever get out of Dodge? Uh, nothing more than I can carry. That's right. That's absolutely right. You're eating dust and dodging bullets and chasing every penny ante bad man on the prairie. Isn't that right? That's about it. You're frying in the summer and freezing in the winter. Nurse made in a town that doesn't even thank you for it. <laughs> You know, you always were one to talk up a storm, Luke. I'm talking sense, Matt. I'm right, and you know it. Well, you can stay on here and spend your life for this town and get no thanks for it. Now, isn't that so? I don't get paid in thanks. Or much else, either. Well, I'm on my way, Matt. Got to collect some money from a fellow up country, but you think it over. I'll be back. You coming through, Dodge? Yeah. Yeah, I'm coming through in a few days, heading west. You got any sense, you come with me. Think it over, Matt. Yeah. I will think it over. So long, Luke. I'll be back, Matt. You'll be ready. Yeah. Well, it's been a long time since I've seen you take a drink before noon. Oh, hello, Kitty. You gonna ask me to sit down? Oh, oh, sure, sit down. <laughs> that fellow, an old friend of yours? Matt? What? Oh, for heaven's sakes, if I'm bothered. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, Kitty. I, uh, <laughs> I was thinking. L- what did you say? It's kind of early to be wool gathering. I just asked you if that fellow was an old friend. Yeah, Luke Gilmore. I know him in Texas. Oh, you're making some plans with him? I don't know yet, Kitty. But it just might be. Here it is, Mr. Jones. I'm awful sorry I let it run out of coral oil, but it's refilled right up the top. And I trimmed down the wick a little dab, too. Thanks, Chester. Just set it off. Anything else I could get you, Mr. Dillon? A nice cup of coffee? Oh, no, thanks, Chester. I'm going to turn in. Maybe a fresh pail of water? Mm-hmm. I'd go fetch it from the well. No, you just brought one, didn't you? Oh. Yes, well. Well, then I'll just see if this window's open nice and wide. Oh, for goodness sakes, Chester. Will you stop fussing around like a mother hen? What's the matter with you? Well, I think nothing really the matter. I... I just got to come right out with it, Mr. Dillon. Come out with what? Everybody's talking about how you're out here as a bull in the thorn thicket these last few days. Miss Kitty and Doc and me was wondering if maybe there's anything wrong. I don't know. What do you mean? 
Oh, never mind, Chester. It's not important. Now, why don't you get on out of here and let me get some sleep, huh? All right, Mr. Dillon. Yes, sir. Good night, Chester. Good night, Mr. Dillon. Just say you're gonna need them. 
shoot him, Jack. You stand to be in enough trouble running guns to the Indians without shooting a U.S. Marshal. Oh, ain't nobody gonna find you to know about it, Marshal. Don't you worry none at all. Come down out of that wagon. Jack, you take another look, Marshal. There's three of us. We got guns to ram straight down your throat. There wouldn't be three of you when it was over. You can't take us all three. Maybe not. But I can take the first one to start anything, so go ahead and try it. Oh, he, he's bluffing, Jack. You can sure find out in a hurry. Now, come on. You make your play or you come down off that wagon. No man wear a tin badge going to face me down. All right, who's next? You killed him. You killed Jack. Now, is either one of you two feeling brave? And you drop your guns and you get down off that wagon right now. now stand right there. Long robe. Marshal, tie him up for me, will you? There's a rope under the wagon seat. I'll put this man in the back. Those two tied, you can drive the wagon back to town. I'll ride alongside. You can pull up now, Long Robe. I'll take over here. We're just about in. Oh, oh, oh. be better if you weren't seen around here. You might have to answer a lot of questions. Questions bring trouble. They can if people don't understand the answers. Marshall understands answers. Well, some of them anyway. Marshall understands answers about Indians. Marshall knows ways of the plains. Well, I've been out here for a long time. I should have learned something. All white men do not learn. Uh, maybe not. It is good for Indian to have Marshall learn. I guess so. It is good for white man, too. Well. It is good for man to live among people he understands where there is need. Long robe, go now. All right, long robe. Will your people be moving on soon? At the next full moon. Oh, good hunting. When the next north wind blows, my people come back. Long Robe come to smoke pipe with Marshal. All right, Long Robe. I'll be here. Hmm. It is good for man to live among people. He understands. Marshall. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine, Richard Perkins, Ralph Moody, Lawrence Dobkin, and Joseph Kern. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. <laughs>